there, my dearest Huckleberries, and welcome to a very important video for all of you van dwellers, solo travelers out there looking to save a buck and stay safe on the road. Even though this video does talk a lot about sleeping in Walmart parking lots specifically, there are a lot of techniques and tricks that you can apply to other stealth camping scenarios. So let's get started. Well, hi there, Miss Holly. Sure looks cold out there. Are you sure you're gonna wanna sleep in your car in the middle of December? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Even though I am filming this video in December in Minneapolis, I personally wouldn't recommend it. Of course, not everyone has a choice, but I think it is a good disclaimer to mention that sleeping in your car when it's too cold or too hot can be very dangerous. If you guys are interested in hearing my tips on how to stay warm or cool while sleeping in a car, just let me know and I can cover it in another video. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, it looks kind of sunny too. <laughs> are you sure you're ready to go to sleep? I'm only filming this during the day so that all of you lovely huckleberries out there can see me. Even though I have taken day naps on rare occasions in my car, I wouldn't recommend doing this till after dark. Okay, time to get started. So this is Minnie the Mazda. I've lived in her for six months and have traveled all over the US and Canada. If you're interested, be sure to watch my van tour for a full look at what my setup was like while on the road and check out my van life playlist for all van related videos. So the first thing you're going to need to do is find out which Walmart you want to sleep at. I prioritize a Walmart based on a few factors. How late is the Walmart open? A 24-hour Walmart is always ideal and usually not hard to find. I also look at the star rating on Google. There is a reason a Walmart gets two stars, so you're gonna be better off visiting the Walmart with the highest rating possible. And thirdly, staying at a Walmart super center is always going to be better than a neighborhood market Walmart. It's just depending on the size and the likelihood that overnight parking is allowed. So, now that you know where you're going, prep yourself as much as you can before arriving. Stopping at a gas station or a Starbucks to brush your teeth, showering at a local gym, whatever you have to do before bed, it's best to do before arrival. I had really good luck with Walmarts in the southern part of the country, being that they had private sinks and private bathrooms, so I did a lot of my bedtime prep in the south at Walmarts. You can also use a family restroom if you'd like privacy. So you do have options, but overall it is best to do that sort of thing elsewhere. All right, let's go to Walmart. So the first thing I do is scope out the scene to make sure I feel comfortable sleeping there. I read signs and look for other campers. If you see big vans or RVs, you're in the clear regardless of signs. Some signs will say no overnight parking. Some signs will be much clearer on the strictness, such as we will tell you or four hour parking limit. If that's the case, find a different place to sleep if you can, which again, I can cover in detail in another video. But all in all, I have slept in Walmart parking lots with no parking signs, no overnight parking signs on multiple occasions with no trouble at all. And that's the biggest benefit of car camping and stealth camping versus an RV. Once I've deemed that the Walmart is acceptable, I park towards the front of the lot and do the final preps to my car. For my setup, that means putting up or pulling over my curtains and cracking my sunroof. If you don't have a sunroof, just crack your window, less than a finger's width. Then I go into Walmart. I think it's really important after a long day of driving to get a nice little walk in and the garden center is usually my favorite place to go inside of Walmart since you are surrounded by nature and plants and all things pretty. Unfortunately right now the Walmarts around Minneapolis don't have so much of that and they apparently turned it into a Christmas wonderland but I'll take what I can get. <laughs> Once I've walked around a little bit, I make sure to purchase something, whether that is a banana or an apple or a juice. Anything that I might want for breakfast the next morning is a great idea. Otherwise, I usually can find something that I need, such as cliff bars, 
Cool mint chocolate is my favorite. Oh, so good. Always take your seat just in case. And last but not least, go to the bathroom. Oh, I should have mentioned this before. Don't drink any water for like a few hours before bed because the last thing you're gonna want is to have to go into Walmart again at 3 a.m. to go to the bathroom. So try and hold back on your liquid intake towards the end of the evening. I cut myself off around 9 p.m. Once I've arrived back in my car, I take some time to relax and chill out, do any last minute things on my phone, like watch a couple of YouTube videos, Instagram some stuff, whatever I do to entertain myself that night. Because once I've parked in my final position, I try not to use my electronics. I park towards the back of the lot, typically under a light, and avoid big groups of cars, but I don't like to be singled out either. It took me a long time to figure out the parking positions that I enjoyed the most, and that's just something that comes with practice, but anywhere towards the back is great. I then quickly put up my sun visor for extra privacy and slip off my shoes. And then I toss my keys and my phone into the back seat. While I was traveling recently, I did have a taser that lived in the back of my car since the taser would have been the most appropriate weapon for me to use if something were to go wrong in the middle of the night. However, for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna show off my pepper spray. Definitely don't wanna spray pepper spray in my car, but for any first time travelers, first time stealth campers, having some sort of protection is going to be so, so good for your peace of mind and will help you get a good night's sleep. And now I'm ready to slip off into bed. I look both ways, make sure no one's watching and head on back. Cozy, comfy. Most nights, because I was traveling during the summer months, I never used my sleeping bag. I would just sleep right on top. But having a sleeping bag is very important. I also have a sheet and a pillow. Once I'm back in bed, I can finish up my curtains, make sure everything is fastened, all cracks are concealed and then I feel like I have a nice amount of privacy. I avoid using lights unless I see lots of RVs out and then I feel a little more comfortable, but for the most part, I don't really bother using my phone. Maybe I'll listen to a podcast with some earbuds. As far as accessories go, I never ended up using things like an eye mask or earplugs. I felt safer being able to hear and see things. So even though at times, you will have loud employees talking at night or rowdy customers in the parking lots. Ultimately, it felt worth it to me for security reasons. And that, my friends, is my Walmart nighttime routine. This is basically what I did the majority of my trip. So let me know what you guys thought of this video and if you wanna hear more about traveling and stealth camping and van life because I learned a lot along the way. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, and any follow-up questions, I encourage you to write in the comment section below, and I'd be happy to answer them for you. So, I'll see you guys really soon! Thank you again for watching, and if it is your first time here, welcome. I hope you'll hang around with me for my future adventures. Alright, I love you guys so much. Peace.